another phenomenon that I'm going to show you all, and it's called beats. Yeah, it's kind of funny. No, not, not beats like as in, uh, you know, musical beats. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Probably me. Oh, you know what? I bet it was the bass. That'll be interesting to see. Okay. So what I have here on the screen, and it's just the video camera taking a picture of this, it's called an oscilloscope. And what the oscilloscope does is it registers difference in voltage. Okay? Uh, and we use differences in voltage to drive our speakers. And so what our oscilloscope is going to do is it's going to tell us a, visually what the sound looks like. Okay? And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the, the last one, the subwoofers, and now I'm going to put it down to a little bit smaller speakers. And I'm going to turn on uh, a note that's about 600 hertz. Okay? It's much higher in pitch than you were just listening to, but the effect is more dramatic. So everybody hears that tone. And so what you have is you have this tone that's scrolling across the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the oscilloscope, hey oscilloscope, what I want you to do is just keep this interesting wave on the screen. Don't let it run across. Okay, so now I have this tone. The frequency is not varying, which is why people find it annoying because the frequency doesn't change. We don't like that. We don't like solid tones. Okay, we don't like pure tones. We like music. We like like things to change up a little bit. But so we have a pure tone. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the volume on that tone. I'm just going to change the volume. Right, I'm going to turn it up. And what I want you to do is look at this wave and see what about the wave changes. So by changing the volume, what am I changing? Amplitude. I'm changing amplitude. Notice, you still have the same number of wave crests and troughs on the screen. So what does that tell you about the frequency? Yeah, the frequency is not changing. When you change volume, change amplitude. You do not change frequency. Frequency is pitch, like how does it sound? This is sounding the same, it's just louder and softer. Okay, so I've got this tone and I'm playing it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the other speaker at the exact same tone. Okay, how many of you all are musicians? You're a musician? Do you? What do you play? Bass and guitar. You play bass and guitar? Okay. When you, what do you, how do you tune your guitar? You go online? Do you have a like little tone thing? No. Well, it's like that, but it's on the internet. Okay. A lot of times what the people will do to tune their instruments, okay, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what they'll do is they'll play a tone, right? And then they'll take their other instrument and they'll play the same, they'll get a, a tone that's the right frequency, and they'll play it. And then they'll play their guitar, and they'll flick it, and they'll see, does it sound the same? So they'll tune it by ear. But that's a, not an efficient way of tuning your, your guitar. The best way to do it is to listen for what's called beats. Okay, beats. If you have two sound waves or two waves that are close to being in frequency but slightly out of frequency, then what it ends up happening is you have these alternating periods of constructive and destructive interference. And so it makes it sound like beats. If you listen to people while they're trying to tune an orchestra and they play one long note, like all the violins will play the same long note. What the orchestra conductor is doing is he's listening for this period of constructive and destructive interference to see if everybody's in tune. And let me show you what that sounds like. Beats, a, a physics beats is not the same thing as like the musical beat, you know, like I'm enjoying the music. <laughs> yeah, that's hokey. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the other speaker on to the same note, hopefully. But I'm off because I was playing with the subwoofer, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the other one up so it's got the same amplitude, right? So now they're both the same height, so they have the same amplitude according to the oscilloscope. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it to where this other note is the exact same note, so they're tuned together, okay? And I want you to listen for what's going to happen. So this one is too high. 
this one's vibrating a lot more than this one here. So I'm going to slow it down. And you all hear the pitch. But notice the amplitude's not changing, which is kind of an interesting thing. Because it will get louder to you. But that's just because you hear it better. But the amplitude's not changing. So any change in volume just has to do with your ear. It doesn't have to do with the actual wave itself. All right. So now I'm about 700 hertz. And I'm going to keep dropping the frequency. And notice, now the waveform, you can see it starting to scroll across. You can actually make out what it is. And the closer the two are in frequency, the slower this thing will scroll across the screen. And as soon as they're identical frequency, the two will stop scrolling. They'll both, you'll be able to see both wave patterns. Now, I'll tell you right now, I have yet to ever get it perfect to where they stop identically. Because it's very difficult to do with analog equipment. But we'll play with it anyways. But as I get closer, I want you to listen because I want you to hear what they call beats. And you'll know what it is. Do you hear that? That wobbling sound? That wobbling sound, you want me to turn it down a little bit, the amplitude? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. What that wobbling sound is, is sometimes the waves are mashed up crest to crest. And so then you have constructive interference. And sometimes you have crest to trough. And so you have destructive interference. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it closer, and the closer you are to frequency, to being in tune, the slower the pattern is. And so when I'm way far away, it beats really, really fast. And then as I get closer, it gets slower and slower and slower. This is how piano tuners tune pianos. They strike the note, they hit the tuning fork, and they listen, and they're trying to hear. Do they hear this beat pattern? Now notice now, they're barely moving relative to each other. In fact, they're, they're not moving at all almost, which is fantastic. Ah, oh, there it goes. So there's a little bit of drift. But they're essentially the exact same frequency, but they might be slightly out of phase. So I can adjust that. I can play with the amplitude a little bit. So that one was a little too tall. But now they're really close. In fact, they are so close to being in the exact same frequency that you probably can't hear the difference. You probably cannot hear the wobbling because the human hearing isn't perfect. So, what I'll do now is I'm going to tell the oscilloscope, hey oscilloscope, what I want you to do instead of showing both waves is I want you to add both waves together. And I want you to show what the waves should look like. So, this is what we have now the oscilloscope is actually showing you the constructive and destructive interference. As the crests get closer and closer together, it makes a larger and larger waveform. As they get further apart and you get a crest on top of a trough, then it cancels each other out. But since it's so close, it's kind of hard to tell that that's actually happening because your ear gets a chance to adjust. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of frequency a little bit and I want you to listen and look at this and see how the two are corresponding, the sound that you hear and the waveform on the screen. That's what I was doing yesterday. So do you hear that? The wobbling? So when it's loudest, this wave is tallest, and when it's softest, the wave is shortest. And that's because you're getting alternate periods of constructive and destructive interference. Okay? Questions? Besides, can I turn it off? All right. Now, there is a point at which you're, he you're hearing, you no longer hear the beats. As you get further and further away, it gets faster and faster and faster until your brain stops hearing beats and it starts hearing two separate notes. So 
now you just get garbage across the oscilloscope. Alright. So about how much time do we have left? Two minutes. Two minutes, fantastic. The timing is perfect. Alright, that's it. Yes.